open it up and just... I took it down. I huh? turned it off. Okay. There's the slide now. the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter. Welcome to Community Presbyterian Church worship service this morning. It is so great to come together and worship God on this day of resurrection. The scriptures this morning will come from Psalm 118 and we'll read the first two verses and then skip down to 14 through 24. And our script, New Testament scripture, the gospel, will come from Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Now, a few of our students from our Mountain Mover Youth Group made a recording of the Gospel of John's resurrection story. And I had intended to make this that video part of this worship service so that we would all be able to watch it. But I discovered that it requires technical abilities far beyond my non-existent uh, abilities and I didn't have time to learn how to do it. So um, I invite you, encourage you 
to go to the church YouTube channel after the service and uh, watch the video and then I will also post it on, um, on Facebook so that you'll be able to see it. They did a great job. This morning we're going to open with prayer coming from the song Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Please join me in prayer. Jesus Christ is risen today, our triumphant holy day, who did once upon the cross Suffer to redeem our loss. Alleluia. Hymns of praise, then let us sing unto Christ, our heavenly King, who endured the cross and grave, sinners to redeem and save. Hallelujah. That the pains which he endured, our salvation hath procured. Now above the sky he's king, where the angels ever sing. Alleluia. Amen. I invite you to listen to the words that come to us from Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and then 14 through 24. Hear the word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Every Sunday when we come together, we recognize how over the last week, if we're really honest with ourselves, we know that we have not lived as God calls us to live. But we do know that we can always turn back to the Lord and receive not just forgiveness, but also new life. So together this morning, I invite you to pray with me. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past we cannot change. Open us to a future in which we can be changed. And Lord, grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and in your image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. morning we do remember how Christ rose from the dead and we can never be thankful enough for what God has done for us for how much God has loved us but we can though offer what we have and remembering that what we have is all a gift from God and so this morning I just wanted to share with you a few things that I'm thankful for I am very thankful for Jesus Christ 
I'm thankful that people have continued to send in financial gifts to continue God's work through this congregation. And it's fun because they've come by snail mail, <laughs> by our new online giving option, and even cash. This week I found an envelope full of cash stuck between the front doors of the church. Our Presbyterian, the Presbyterian of the Inland Northwest, has paid for two months of our Zoom program so that we're able to Zoom together. It has also, uh, through our pension, Board of Pensions, the Presbyterian Church has uh, forgiven three months of our dues. I'm thankful that people are checking in on each other. And thanks to Jane and to the Presbytery, we have now been given a grant to help us fill the Little Free Pantry, which is getting, wonderfully, a lot of use. Uh, but we are looking to be able to spend those funds on some family-sized items. And because of this Presbytery grant, uh, we will also receive a matching grant from Whitworth University Office of Church Engagement. See, God has continued to provide for us in the middle of these very difficult and uncertain days. So I want you to just take a moment and decide what it is that you will offer to God this day. Will it be your finances? Will it be your heart, your hands? Whatever it is, know that when we give in thanksgiving and gratitude, we make God smile. Let's just pray over those offerings. Lord, we humbly offer to you a thousand thank yous for your greatest gift in Jesus Christ. Let all that we give you be used by you to feed the hungry, house the homeless, and lift up the hopeless. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, I was looking at the news this morning, and have you read it? Have you watched it on TV? Because there doesn't seem to be much good going on right now. There's really not much good news. Daily reports of the spread of the coronavirus are, and death tolls. That's what fills the news day and night. At the Mexico-U.S. border, people that are seeking asylum are being turned away um, out of fear of the virus. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, just, just within a day or so of them and being ready to announce that the Ebola virus had been eradicated in that country, a new case of the Ebola virus was confirmed. For Christians, this last week has been filled with reminders of, of that horrible last week of Jesus' life. We are indeed living in a weird time. People feel isolated. We miss our friends, our face-to-face -face time, giving hugs, and a wave, you know, hi. It's just, it's just not the same. The economy is struggling, shrinking. Retirement funds, and while gas prices are really low, uh, it's, it's really great, but we are all meant to stay home, all stay local. So the impact of this stay at home order is beginning to really take its toll on people. And we're wondering, when will this ever end? How will it end? And we're frustrated, facing an uncertain future. We're getting antsy. And we're grieving. And today is Easter Sunday, a morning normally filled with new clothes and church. I, I remember, and this is going to age me, but I remember one of the highlights when I was little was getting new white gloves and a new hat for Easter. It was a, it was a day of, of family dinners and signs of new life, like bunnies and baby chicks. It's so tempting just to skip it all, to wait and say, well, when we all get back together again, then we'll have Easter. But we believe that every Sunday morning Every morning is Easter Sunday, so this year we are not going to skip it at all. In fact, I think more than any other time, we need Easter. We need to hear the resurrection story. We need to experience God's power, God's plan, and God's love 
Now today in April 2020, listen now to the word of God that comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. All of the women and the disciples, all the friends of Jesus were grieving that morning. And when they set out early that day, they just wanted to do the usual burial rituals, to have a memorial service. But when they arrived at the tomb, they had a really unexpected problem. The tomb was empty. Jesus' body was gone. And even before Mary Magdalene and the other Mary arrive at the tomb, God displays his power. Look at verses 1 through 4. First, God sent an earthquake. Whenever there is an earthquake in the Bible, it's a symbol of God's powerful presence. God was present with Jesus when he died, and Matthew's Gospel in 27 says the earthquake rocked the world. That earthquake scared the centurion and the other guard guarding the tomb. They were all terrified. Well, that morning, then Jesus, then God sent this angel to the tomb. And the angel looked as bright as lightning. His clothes were white as new, fresh snow. An angel appeared, if you remember, at Jesus' birth. And now again, a messenger brings good news of great joy. He rolls back the large stone and sat on it, claiming ownership over, over the stone and the tomb, over it all. Well, the earthquake and the angel really didn't seem like very good news to the Roman guards. So they were so frightened, they shook, and then they became like dead men, which in a way is really what they were. They just didn't know it. They didn't know Jesus. Ephesians chapter two in the message translation tells us about who we once were before we knew Jesus. And that same passage applies to the Roman soldiers who were without Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2 says they were mired in that old stagnant life of sin. They let the world tell them how to live. Their lungs were filled with polluted, polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. They were dead. They just didn't know it. And then the women arrive and find an empty tomb. An empty tomb proving that God's power is uncontainable. Today, our empty sanctuaries prove that very same thing. God cannot be contained. 
we can worship the Lord wherever we are. God's power was on full display as a sign to Mary Magdalene, the others, and to us to tell us that God is in charge. And the world hasn't been the same since. God is still in charge, displaying power over life and death. God raised Jesus Christ from the dead just like he said he would and finished God's plan. The book we've been reading, The Story, by Max Licato and Randy Friese, puts it this way. God had promised since the Old Testament days that he would redeem and restore his people. He sent his son, the Savior, who died and was raised to life so that people could be forgiven and brought into a relationship of peace, of fellowship, and love with God. See, once we were banished from God's presence for disobedience back in the garden, but now, by Christ's blood, we have all been brought back into God's family. And there's more. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, it says that God was also pleased to bring everything, everything on earth and in heaven back to himself through Christ. And the world hasn't been the same ever since. As someone once said, this is the greatest love story ever told. And today we need to hear about God's love. At least I do. A love so great that God gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. It comes from John chapter 3, verse 17. We need to be reminded of all of the ways that God continues to love us. Our blessing, our gifts, our family, our lives, our friends, the seasons, even our unique abilities and our emotions, even those are all gifts of love from God. We have been adopted and we are now God's children. See, we see God's love on Easter morning when Jesus met the women. God continues to meet us right, right where we are. If you're feeling afraid today, Jesus says, don't be afraid. Because why? Because he's there with you. If you're feeling worried or weak, Jesus says, give your burdens. Give them to me. I'll take care of them. I'll carry them for you. And when you feel like you're alone or getting antsy, Jesus is going to meet you right where you are and give you whatever you need, whether it be peace or love or strength or perseverance. Whatever it is, God's going to give it to you. Jesus is right there with you. God's love is so powerful that nothing can separate us from it. There's this love that is everlasting and forever. Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 2, in the beginning, in the beginning uh, verses, that we, we were dead in our transgressions and sin. We followed the kings and the rulers of the world, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you and I have been saved. Thanks be to God. Our world seems messy and chaotic, Frustrations are running pretty high, I would imagine, certainly in our household, probably in yours. And some feel like there is no one who knows the truth and that no one is in charge. But Easter tells us something entirely different. It displays God's power. God's long-term rescue plan to save us has happened just as Jesus said it would. And God continues to love us. The very moment the angels heard and greeted the women, that very moment the women heard, don't be afraid, Jesus isn't here, he is risen from the dead, the world has never been the same. And for that I say, thanks be to God. Amen. this time I invite you to, to pray with me our closing prayer and as 
as normal as usual when we get to the end of the prayer i invite you wherever you are to uh, join in with the lord's prayer let us pray good and gracious god you are the god of life your power is uncontainable your plan is complete and your love never ends we rejoice in the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, his defeat over death and the gift of new life. We praise you for the new life we see around us, the new flowers, in the new ways people are serving you, and in our new life that we have with you. To you we bring our prayers for those ill with COVID-19 virus, for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one whom they were unable to be with. And for those who are suffering from difficult days. We do pray and lift up the leaders of our nation, our state, and our community. Guide and direct them in these days as they have, you know, they, they have some difficult decisions. We pray for those who are serving in our military. We pray for the, our people who are serving in our hospitals that are battling the virus and people pray, that are working in clinics around the world, continuing to love and serve your people, God. Most of all today, we pray for those who do not know you, who are dead like the soldiers at the empty tomb. Help us to be your voice, your heart and hands to share the good news of your love, your forgiveness, and your eternal life. In these uncertain times, may we all turn to you, trusting in your love, your grace, and your mercy in our world. As we pray together the prayer your Son taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you for worshiping with uh, Community Presbyterian Church this morning. And now I invite you to receive the blessing. Go and tell. Go and tell what you have seen. Go and tell what you know. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And now may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.